What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. On January 28th, Jeremy Sohan just dropped his career high 30 points on the Phoenix Suns. Now, today I am jumping the gun a little bit, but just seeing him score 30 points, I think is pretty promising. So, you know what? I'm not saying it's going to sustain that way or he's going to turn into that guy, but I'm going to make him that guy today here in 2K. We're doing a Jeremy Sohan. San Antonio Spurs rebuild. Let's go. Before you get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciate it. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I feel like I have disrespected Jeremy Sohan in Spurs videos uh, lately. I feel like I don't do anything with him. I've traded him, I think, once or twice as well when I do Spurs rebuild. So today, we're changing that. I gave him a bunch of badges. I put his progression, his development traits through the roof. So I want him to turn into a superstar for the Spurs. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm clearly jumping the gun here. But there is something about this guy that's pretty promising. I will say that. So if the Spurs can turn this guy into a superstar, which, like I said, I'm kind of jumping the gun like crazy here. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But you could say that I called it. No, just kidding. You don't have to do that. But Johnson, Vassell, Trey Jones, Jacoberto Richardson, Zach Collins, Jeremy Sohan. There's a lot to like here. The Spurs definitely have a lot of good young pieces here. And then, like I said, Jeremy Sohan on the 28th against the Suns, 30 points. And then Keller Johnson had 34 as well. He was 3 of 6 from 3. And Jeremy Sohan also very good defensively. I almost thought about telling this video I made the next Kawhi, but I probably won't do that. Probably won't go that crazy. So what I'm going to do is we are going to, like I said, let Jeremy Sohan be a huge part of what we do in today's video. In the past, I've always had him come off the bench or just not really be involved. Or I think I've traded him once or twice, like I said. So today we're not doing that, but I do want to start with trading Yaka Pertle away. Uh, that is clearly something I think is going to happen. So we might as well just make it happen here before we simulate the rest of the season. So uh, I think the Spurs want two first round picks. So if I can get that, I will. The Clippers, I saw just off me two first. So I might do that. Can the Clippers even trade two first round picks? I have no idea, but they're off me two here. And that's what the Spurs want. So you know what? You get to go to the Clippers and just like that, we have two first round picks. How are the Clippers even able to do that? Did they have a trade exception? I don't even know how they were able to do that, to be honest with you. But whatever, he is on the Clippers now. I have no idea how the Clippers even had the cap space to absorb him. Maybe 2K just doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Regardless, we got our two first round picks. And now I can start Jeremy Sohan. And then I guess that, well, they're already starting Sohan, which is great. So Sohan starting. You got Trey Jones, Vassell, Kelvin Johnson. Zach Collins going to be starting center, at least for now. Richardson. Uh, Bates Giop, and then uh, you got Doug McDermott, Gorgie Dang, Isaiah Roby, Stanley Johnson down here. I also could trade away Josh Richardson, who might, you know, gain some value. I don't know what he'd go for. Maybe a couple seconds. Maybe someone give up a late lottery protected first. I don't know. Kind of hard to gauge what Richardson's value would be. So, I like the Maver I don't think the Mavericks would trade for Richardson again. They already did that with that Seth Curry thing back in the day. So, I'll just leave him. Let's just simulate the rest of the season. Let's see how this goes. And then next season, hopefully Jeremy Sohan is just an absolute stud for us. This year, he's only going to be a 76 overall. I also want to boost his shots in to see that way he's taking more shots. Uh, and then maybe we can get lucky in the lottery on top of that and then have Victor Webb and Yama out of this core. That'd be kind of crazy, but we'll simulate the rest of this season to start things off. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to choose overs or unders on your favorite players that you enjoy watching each and every day. It is available on mobile or desktop, and this is how it looks. They give you the number, and you're going to choose over or under on it. They pretty much have every sport you can imagine, whether it's soccer, NFL, NHL. They have a ton of different options, so this is how it works. You choose between two to six players, two being three times your money, all the way up to six players, 25 times your money. Price Picks has just elevated my watching experience to a whole new level. So if you want to sign up, I also have some of my entries as examples here. That way you can kind of see how it works. But if you want to sign up, links in the description. Use code CRUSHABLES. They match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Thank you, Price Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Do I even need to show the rewards? They're usually the same. Luca, MVP, Paolo, Benedict, Matherin, and Beach, and Goon, Mike Malone, and Jacob Park is your rewards. And then uh, all defense first team, all defense second, all rookie team. No Jeremy Sohan, but he does make all-rookie second team, averaging 11.5 points per game this season. Not very efficient whatsoever, but that's okay. We're not worried about that just yet. So, let's simulate the playoffs, and let's see what's the championship real quick. I'm assuming the Grizzlies get it. That's usually how it goes. But no, he got Luka versus... Uh, I got the Heat versus the Mavericks, I guess I should say. And he got the Dallas Mavericks going on with the championship. So... Good for them. You got LeBron James retiring. Uh, he's probably so tired of the refs that he's like, you know what? I'm out of here. But let's go to the lottery. And let's see where our pick is going to fall. So we are projected 
the third pick from the Hornets, but I'm pretty sure that pick is protected. We're actually projected the number one overall pick, so we have to take that. I also need to go show you guys the overall stats, but I'm just going to skip to the results, and we ended up falling to five. W. Love to see that. The Hornets got number one, so maybe it's because I skipped. Who knows? All good, though. Uh, that just means we don't have to worry about Victor Webb and Yama taking more shots from Jeremy Sohan, right? So, as far as the stats were concerned, if we take a real quick look, you had 19.8 points per game from Keldon Johnson, 16 from Vassell, 12 from Richardson, 12 from Trey Jones, and 11 and a half from Jeremy Sohan. And then we can kind of, you know, Greg Popovich, I'm probably just going to keep him around. I don't know how much longer he can, you know, he plans on coaching, but obviously if I can keep him, I'm going to. There's no reason to let him go. So I'm going to sign my predator defensive coach, and then we get our guard guru. And then we could just pretty much head to draft night. I don't know who we're going to be adding with the fifth overall pick, but we can probably add another young star here. So a lot to be excited about. So let's make sure we do just that. Let's head to draft night. And let me make sure there's no one we got to trade away. Pretty sure there's not. But if there is, we will do that. So you got like so on McDermott. I could trade McDermott on draft night for a couple seconds if I needed to, or, you know, maybe a second or so. The Cavaliers off me a first. I don't think McDermott's worth a first or anything. I'd be willing to get rid of him for a second round pick. Josh Minot and a second round pick. And we get, uh, okay, this one's kind of interesting. Second round pick. And we get a young player for Doug McDermott. The, you know, Timberwolves are trying to win now. That gives them another shooter off the bench. Sure. Why not? We'll do this trade. Josh might turn into something for us. We'll go ahead and make that happen. And now we have the fifth pick and then the 11th pick in the second round. And we have, so you have number one, 11 and five. So that is three young players we can add, which is really nice. And we still have Blake Wesley and Malachi Branham down here as well which I don't even know if we had in the rotation. So we're going to figure that out as well. So let's go to draft night. Webb and Yama is going to join LaMelo and Charlotte. Uh, Scoot goes number two to Toronto. Thompson, number three. Uh, Brandon Miller, number four. And that means we can add Cameron Whitmore to this team, which actually is kind of a W. So I'm going to ask absolutely add Cameron Whitmore to this roster. Don't know where I'm going to put him uh, with these other guys, but he, he's going to be a really nice addition to the team. So... Don't really need another forward by any means. I see Dylan Mitchell down here. We got Jeremy Roach, Colby Jones, Marcus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Marcus here in the second round. And then I'm going to take, we got Kyle. I guess I'll take him as well. Doesn't really matter too much here. These second rounders may never even see minutes. But we got 81 overall. Cameron Whitmore at five or four or whatever pick we were at five. Yeah, five. And I'm going to sign my two second rounders. Player options. I'm going to accept Zach Collins probably. Pretty solid backup center, so no reason to let him go. And then Vassell, of course, we're accepting as well. Trey Jones, I do want to back. Romeo Lankford, I'm not as concerned about. But if he is back, that's cool as well. I don't think I'll be spending money in free agency. We could sign Kata Bates Giop back. But uh, Jop, Giop, however you say it. Uh, but I don't know if we really need him back. So Wesley and Sasser right now are our point guards, our backup point guards, whatever you want to call them. Vassell, Malachi, Branham. R2. You got Kellen Johnson and Cameron Whitmore now. You got Jeremy Sohan, who I'm going to continue to start there at power forward. And then Kyle, and then you have Zach Collins. So really, our center position is kind of where we're lacking the most. So if there is a center out here that I could steal from someone, it definitely would not be a bad idea. I see that 2K doesn't have Miles Turner extension in yet, which uh, it just happens. So no big deal. But uh, if we can add like a good center here, I think I would want to. I don't really think I want to just roll with, uh, you know, obviously just go with Zach Collins and that's it. We could sign Pertle back again. That'd be funny. Mo Wagner, Mo Bamba, Nas Reed. Honestly, I feel like you give Nas Reed like a starting center position in the NBA. He could turn into something. So I'm kind of tempted to give him our starting center spot. So you know what? I'm not saying he's going to develop anything crazy here in 2K. But I feel like if we gave him, if he had an opportunity to start somewhere, he could actually be really good. So I'm going to go ahead and sign him to a deal. He is playing behind Cat and Gobert right now. He's buried in the, you know, the Timberwolves front court. But I think if you give the man an opportunity, he could turn into something really nice. So the only thing we really need to figure out now is just get um, Trey Jones back. Unless we want to sign like another point guard, but I don't think I will. So I think I'll just wait for Trey Jones. So uh, he wants like 12 million, which isn't, or 16 million, which isn't too bad. 14 million over three years. I'm cool with that. I'll give that to him. He'll be our new point guard. We're not spending a ton of money on the team yet anyway, so that's fine. So that'll be my offseason. Now, player progression, hopefully so on's up like crazy, and he did not move. Okay, so I'm going to progress him myself. I changed his attributes. I changed his potential, but 2K didn't move him whatsoever, which is really annoying, but you know what? It's okay. I'll fix it myself, and then I'll have him up to like an 80. I'll put him up to an 80 overall, because like I said, I did everything I could to try to progress him, but 2K is like, nah, we're just going to leave him the way he is. 
And they, I think they took some of his badges away as well, which is kind of annoying. But whatever. I'll see you guys in the rotation. The new rotation is Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, Kelvin Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, up to an 80 overall. You got Nas Reed at the center position. Cameron Whitmore off the bench, Zach Collins, Malachi Branham, and Charles off the bench as well. So nine-minute rotation, if we take a real quick look at it, it's kind of what it's looking like. They're giving Jeremy Sohan the most minutes, which, most minutes, which I'm okay with. Nas Reed, I do want to see him get a little bit more minutes as well. I do want to turn him into something if I can, because I feel like, like I said, if he had an opportunity, he could be damn good. So I'm going to go with that. Let's simulate this season. I don't know how this season is going to go for us. Shot tendencies, you got John, Johnson up to an 88. Vassell's an 86. Sohan is a 74, and then Whitmore is an 81. I'm going to move Sohan as the best one. I'm going to give him a 94 shot tendency. Why not? Let's see what he can do with it. So if he can average out there 20 points per game, that'd be kind of cool. Let's simulate this season. Uh, 2K has his power ranking at number 30. So let's see if that's what's going to happen and if we're going to suck that badly. So this season did not go as playing whatsoever. We were still pretty bad. Honestly thought we could have taken a leap, but we did not, which I guess is fine. If we take a look at the player stats, Jeremy Solon did average 19 points per game. Uh, obviously, I boosted his shots and he's up like crazy. 19 for Vassell, 18 from Kellen Johnson, 14 from Cameron Whitmore, and 11 from Nas Reed, 8 from Malachi Branham, 8 from Trey Jones, and then 8 from Zach Collins. Ben McLemore as well with five and a half. Blake Wesley didn't get minutes. I probably should have given him minutes over Ben McLemore. I didn't even realize that was happening, but whatever. That's my mess up. Let's simulate the playoffs and let's see who comes out as champions. Maybe some Ma Mavericks actually got eliminated this time. So we are guaranteed a new champion. Celtics versus Warriors rematch. And you have the Celtics this time getting it on the Warriors. Retirement's got Iguodala, Chris Paul. All these guys retiring. Let's go straight to the lottery and uh, let's see where we're at as far as lottery night is concerned. So we are projected pick number four and that will be it. And I think we have the Charlotte Hornets pick as well. So if we can get like a first overall pick here, that'd be cool. But we actually fall again. So we have the sixth overall pick and then we also get 16 via the Hornets. So six and 16 in this draft. Uh, staff signing. If we take a real quick look at what's here. Greg Popovich still around. So I'm going to keep him. Obviously, no reason to change that. Not going to get the first post D coach we go for. Uh, but now I kind of want to make a trade for a really good, I don't know. I mean, maybe a better point guard, I guess. I guess we have the best. Well, Trey Jones is a pass first point guard, which is kind of what I want right now. Not really looking for a point guard that scores the ball a ton. So I should probably just keep Trey Jones as my starting point guard because he's, like I said, kind of a pass first guy, averaging six assists, only eight points. So that's kind of what I need him for. Whitmore is going to keep developing. Uh, these guys are just going to keep developing. Uh, so the only thing I can really do is maybe upgrade the center position. I do like Nas Reed. I don't know how much he'll develop. Uh, he had pretty good numbers, though. 36% from three. And Zach Collins was our backup. We could resign him 34%. So on draft night, do I want to make a trade or do I just want to simply add to the roster through the draft? Kind of want to take a peek around the league and see if there's anybody that could be worth getting uh, before we make that decision. I decided not to make a trade. Instead, I drafted a new center. So he'll either be backing up Nas Reed or starting over him eventually. And then we won't have to about, you know, worry about resigning Zach Collins. Got Shaq O'Neal here, I guess. I'm assuming that might be Sharif O'Neal, Jalen Lewis. I guess I'll sign both those second rounders. Player options, I'm gonna accept all of these. And then uh, qualifying offers Vassell. Somebody I do want to bring back. I think he's turned into a really good player for the Spurs, although he's injured right now in real life. He does want it back though. So that kind of is unfortunate. Uh, we could sign like a really good free agent on top of things, but I kind of just want to keep rolling with what we got. I want to keep these guys just progressing. Um, we're going to get the Vassell back and we'll have Malachi Brandon backing him up. Our backup point guard position, I guess, could be better, but we do have a lot of depth. Uh, well, I guess I could use a backup point guard or a backup forward. So a backup point guard that I could add to the roster. It would be kind of funny and ironic to add Tyus Jones to back up his brother, I guess. So or even start over him either way. You know what? Why not? I'll bring the Jones together. Two years, 15 million for Tyus Jones to be our backup point guard. I don't see why not. So I'll sign him and then I'll sign Vassell. We call it a day. So Vassell wants a bag, which uh, uh, it kind of sucks giving him this much money, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. So Vassell, welcome back to San Antonio. And I'm not worried about the other two guys. So we got that figured out. So basically, it's just a matter of continuing to develop Jeremy Sohan. And this team will continue to get better. So let's go to player progression and see how it treats us. So hopefully this time 2K just naturally develops so on but if not i'll keep doing it i guess so this time uh he didn't really develop that much at all so i'm gonna keep putting him up as far as i can so i'll probably go up to an 84 this time and uh we'll just keep doing that because i want to see the man become an absolute stud since he's not doing it naturally now i was read up to a 79 and brandon up to a 79 wesley 
and then a lot of guys are developing here so we still have room to make another trade we got the jones twin or i almost said twins brothers i don't know why i said about to say twins got the jones brothers together rolling running that point guard spot then johnson and vassell whitmore and so on are going to run things around here as far as scoring is concerned so let's simulate this next season hopefully this time we can actually sneak into the playoffs that'd be kind of cool but we'll see we are stopped at the trade deadline and i'm about to make a trade for someone who just recently got a huge development in 2k and that is nick claxton he's turned into a really good shot blocker this season and he is kind of the upgrade we need at center right now so claxton is making a bag at 29 million we're gonna have to pay jeremy so on this offseason i believe i'm pretty sure no he's got another year left regardless though uh we got i mean kelton johnson is still have a contract so i don't even have to get rid of kelton johnson i was gonna trade kelton johnson to make this happen but i don't even think i need to do that so what i'm going to do which this is gonna get unorthodox but i'm actually gonna roll with it and kind of make this happen so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to throw nas Reed in this deal so nas Reed will be in this deal 13 million 13 more million would have to be in this trade but i'm offering trey jones as well so nas Reed, trey jones and also blake wesley who's got one and a half uh we got maybe kyle has some more value i don't know so what i'm gonna do is i have to take on some you know cheaper guys from them luca garza and let's say chris clemens who really doesn't have any trade value and then i'll offer this top 10 protected bulls pick do they agree to this wow that was a lot easier than i thought so now we have nick claxton as our brand new center here in san antonio this is where it's going to get a little weird it's going to get a little bizarre but i'm going to roll with it i want to be able to start sohan claxton whitmore vassell all together so one of these guys is gonna be running point guard which is gonna be a little it's gonna be a little weird but uh if we look at Sohan's playmaking he's got a b plus rating i mean i can throw any of these guys at point guard i'm gonna be weird i'm gonna throw sohan at point guard and i'm gonna throw whitmore or kellen johnson it doesn't matter i want to be able to start them i guess is the point i'm trying to make so sohan vassell whitmore johnson claxton trey or tyus jones malachi branham omari and then our nine minute decision gets kind of ruined our depth is kind of ruined but that's okay we can think about that in the future this is what i'm rolling with it's a little bizarre it's a little weird but i think it can work so let's see if we can get all the way to the playoffs with this new rotation so at the end of this season we actually were able to sneak into the playing tournament which is kind of a huge first step to this process so ninth seed in the western conference here were your player stats. So on average, 23 points per game, 18 and a half from Keldon Johnson, 18 from Vassell, 16 from Whitmore, and then 10 from Malachi Branham. Clax went nine and two blocks per game, which is what I wanted out of him. So at this point, the next step is to upgrade the bench. We have our starting five completely locked in. It's a really good starting five, and Branham's developing really nicely as well. So I was so glad we were able to get Clax at the deadline as our brand new center we can be very excited about. But let's even get out of the playing tournament. So we do beat the Mavericks, which is phenomenal. In this game, we had Sohan with 35 points, absolutely outshowing Luka Doncic here, and then you got Memphis. So I don't know if we get past them, and we do not. We get eliminated. That's okay, though. I'm just happy that we made a next jump. Now, like I said, the next step is to get the bench upgraded now that we've made our moves. Got the Nuggets and the Celtics, and the Celtics go on win back-to-back. -back. We need to put an end to that. We got to make the finals next year. We got a lot of retirements here, but I'm not too worried about it. So lottery time once again for us. Maybe we can make another trade for a really good backup. Projected, or we get 13. And we also have uh, this Atlanta Hawks pick and the Thunder pick. So I can use these three picks for a really good backup somewhere, which is probably what I'm going to be looking at. Uh, so that's going to be my first step. Upgrade the bench. We have our starting five completely set. It's a really good one. Honestly, I think we can just upgrade this bench, this team, We'll be in the playoffs next year and possibly a contender at that. Trying to give our bench the perfect upgrade. And I'm looking at Jared Vanderbilt here. And I'm kind of in love with the idea of him being our backup power forward. So I'm going to try to get him here on draft night. He's not going to do anything crazy. I literally just need him to come over here and clamp up. I have a lot of scoring as it is. So Tyus Jones in a late first for him. They want a couple seconds. That is a done deal in my opinion. So just like that, we add Vanderbilt as our brand new backup power forward, which honestly is perfect. So feel great about that we still get to pick at 13 on top of that so i don't know if this guy will be a huge part of what we do but i will grab stoyakovich or however you say his name i don't know if that's peja maybe it's not even the same last name i don't know it looked like it i don't know if it is but he's a 72 overall so may not get a ton out of him i'm gonna sign everyone here player options josh minna i'll accept as well whitmore sohan branham we're bringing them all back and then chris clemens luca garza guys i'm not concerned about so free agency time uh, do we have enough money to sign like a Jason Tatum? We do not. So we're actually depleted in cap space, which uh, we have money to sign a, another mid-level, which is nice. But now we have Sohan. We have Vassell, Branham, 
you have this guy here as well. I don't know how to say his last name, but we got Matt. You got Whitmore. You got Vanderbilt. And then you have Omari. So we have pretty much our backup shooting guard spot locked in. We do need a new small forward and a new a point guard. So this guy is actually 6'11 listed as shooting guard. What the heck? Maybe I can move him to small forward. He goes up like crazy. He's up to a 77. So I found my new small forward already, which is nice. So now we literally just need to sign a backup point guard and we should be chilling. And Jose Alvarado is just kind of sitting here. So I'm just going to give him a deal and we call it a day. So just like that, I'm running with it. And that will be my off season. This team should be a contender. In my opinion, it really should be. I think we've thrown together a really good team here in San Antonio led by Jeremy Sohan, which is kind of funny, but I feel good about it. Player progression. We got so on up to an 87, Vassell up to an 86, Clax 86, Johnson 85, Whitmore's 85. We got Branham up to an 82, Omar's 79, 78 from our small forward, Matt, who's 6'11. This team should be a contender, in my opinion. It really should be. What is 2K going to give us as a simulation? Well, we're going to have to find out, but I'm excited. I really am. Led by Jeremy Salahan, who has turned into a stud for us. Let's go see what this is about to look like. So, rotation. Prime King lands is number five. Here's your rotation. So on Vassell, Whitmore, Vanderbilt, Claxton, Johnson, Branham, Omari, Jose Alvarado, and then our small forward even getting minutes right now. Proficiency, four-star balance. Greg Popovich is led by you. Let's go put this first team in the finals and go win a championship. Let's do this. LaMelo Ball wins MVP. Trey Johnson's rookie of the year on the Mavericks. You got six man going to Fultz, 80 defensive player. Ujman Dang most improved. And Mark is your coach of the year. So the Thunder, we're a very good team. Uh, but here's your NBA first team. I'm assuming we don't get like Sohan making it. That'd be, oh, he did make it. Let's go. All NBA third team, Jeremy Sohan, averaging 30 points per game, nine rebounds, six assists, 57% from the field, and 42% from three. Absolutely amazing. We turn this guy into a superstar. Let's go, Jeremy Sohan. Listen at point guard. I know he's, I don't know if that I should have done that, but you know what? He went off. Go off, Jeremy Sohan. Some player stats. 30 from Sohan, 21 and a half from Vassell, 17 from Kevin Whitmore, 16 from Malachi Branham, 15 from Keldon Johnson, eight and also a block per game from Amari. And then Claxon also had one and a half blocks, uh, seven points. We don't need him to score too much. Just kind of be that shot blocker and rim runner. Five from Vanderbilt. And three of Mose Alvarado. So overall, I don't know, man. I feel good about this team. We get the Grizzlies and round one. We got John Morant we got to deal with. Obviously, the Grizzlies are a very good roster. I feel good about what we have as well. They want to start Vanderbilt, which is interesting to say. Was he starting the whole time and I just didn't notice? Maybe he was. I don't know. Let's see. Are we still going to start Vanderbilt? I guess they want to start Vanderbilt. Proficiency is four-star. Whatever, some like current round against Memphis, and we are going to beat them in five. Let's go. Let's go look at the stats. So on 38 in that game five, game one, 36, game two, 25. Uh, this time, 29, 28. Uh, so on didn't play good in game three, but that's okay. The other guy stepped up, and then 34 from so on. He's averaging 28 points per game in the playoffs. W. Now we get the Denver Nuggets who have Cole Anthony, Watson, Porter, Washington, Jokic. Bones Highland, who apparently they're trying to trade away right now, which is kind of interesting. Jamal Murray. So I wonder what they expect to get from Bones Highland. I think Bones Highland could be really good. He's averaging 21 in the playoffs and average 17 in the regular season. Uh, they are starting Cole Anthony, though. So they have kind of a trio at the point guard. Somebody come around against them, and we beat them in five as well. Let's go, man. Sohan, 38 points per game, averaging 30 in the playoffs now. And now we get the Thunder in round one. So they have Shea Gilders Alexander, Giddy, Lonnie Walker, Williams, Sabonis is back in OKC. They got Chet Holmgren. Not going to be easy whatsoever, but you know what? I believe in Sohan. 98 to 92, we lose 19 points. Game two, we even it up though. 131 to 97. 43, 15, and 10. Triple double from Jeremy Sohan. Game three, let's go up two to one. Can we go up three to one? Come on, come on, come on. Two, two. Okay. Three, two for us. Yeah, beat them in six. Yes, baby. We are in the NBA Finals, and now we get the Giannis Antetokounmpo Knicks. Okay. So, on Finals MVP, 29 points per game, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. The New York Knicks, RJ Hampton, Nick Smith Jr., RJ Giannis, Mitch Robinson. They have a pretty good Knicks team. Don't get me wrong. But game one, up 1-0. 41-9-11. and 11. I don't know. Did I go too far with this one? Does, is Sohan just too good for his... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is okay. This has gotten pretty unrealistic. I didn't expect Zohan to turn this good, but you know what? That's fine. I I'll take it. I will take it. And we went in five. Let's go, baby. <laughs> the Spurs are champions. Jeremy Sohan is your finals MVP. Kind of interesting, kind of funny, 
realistic probably not i mean what do you guys think what do you think jeremy sohan's ceiling is in the nba could you guys see him being a star i i don't know i wouldn't go that far but it was this video was fun regardless so i hope you guys enjoy it leave a like i'll see y'all in the next one thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that i know you'll love